So in 2013, April of 2013, I started a blog out of boredom. My whole life, I'd been a go-getter. I was always working on something, whether it be my childhood recycling business, where my friend and I passed out flyers to um, promote the fact that we'd be bi-weekly to pick up recyclables, you know, before those blue cans were available, to competitive swimming in water polo, jobs, school, and eventually my career as a high school Spanish and ESL teacher. Then I had a kid, and everything slowed down. And it's great. I love being a mom, but as some of you know, it can be very, very monotonous. <laughs> so fast forward a few years, my second kid was five months old, and I thought I'd start a blog as a fun, creative thing to do while my kids were napping. Now, the funny part is, is I didn't even read blogs. I didn't know anything about them. I thought a blog was sort of like this online scrapbook thing, and I like scrapbooking, but I didn't want all the paper, so I thought, this, is, this would be cool. Um, but I literally knew nothing about the world that was about to be opened up to me. So a few months in, I found myself involved in some blogging groups on Facebook, and I started hearing how women were you know, getting some free products, making a little side money, and I was like, Shoot, I'm obsessed with decorating the home we bought a few years ago. I wonder if I could score some free tile for the kids' bathroom renovation that I'd been planning up in my head. So being the go-getter I am, I dove in and started learning everything I could about how to make that happen. Like, tile was the goal. <laughs> um, so I was obsessed like, with what I was learning. I was blown away. Couldn't believe it. And by 2014, on top of being a full-time stay-at-home mom to two very young kids, and with a husband who works night shifts, so he, he works all night, sleeps during the day, I was putting in over 30 hours a week on my blog. And in the first six months of 2014, I made a whopping $101.82, like total, in six months. And my friends and family thought I was crazy to be putting this much time and effort into something and seriously creating a ton of stress for myself for this little return. And don't tell my husband, but I look back and I, I was like a miserable person to be around. I really was. And what I learned was that every time I said yes to my blog, I was saying no to spending time playing with my kids, no to s spending time with my husband. And it got so bad that I started saying no to happy hour with my friends, which is so unlike me. <laughs> like, really, I don't, I don't say no to happy hour. So at this point, I thought, like, I just, I got to quit this thing. This is not a healthy, it's not a healthy, fun habit like it was supposed to be, right? But I could not ignore the wheels that had started turning in my head, and I knew I needed to find a way for these two competing priorities to coexist. Of course, I wanted to spend more time with my kids playing. It's the whole reason I quit a teaching job I loved to become a stay-at-home mom and I didn't want to be all stressed out all the time. I needed to obviously go out with my friends more and spend more time with my husband, but I also wanted to provide um, the opportunities for my family that at the time our one-income household couldn't provide. And I have to admit, the idea of having this online business of my own was like, heck yeah. Um, and I, I was growing and learning in ways I didn't even know existed. It was super exciting. And I knew I could provide value, but I needed to do it my way and on my schedule. And in the back of my mind at this time, I set a little secret goal in my head. I didn't even tell my husband because I didn't want him to think I was more insane than he already thought I was. But I thought, if I could make $65,000 a year by the year 2019, which will be the first year that my youngest will be in full-time school, that I could justify staying home with my kids, which is what I wanted to do, because it would essentially replace my full-time teaching salary. So today I want to share with you just three things that took me from making $101 in the first six months of a year to replacing my full-time income and doing it in just about 20 hours a week. Okay, so the first thing I needed to do was focus my content. Now remember, I was thinking of my blog as, an, as a scrapbook. Okay, so I was like literally posting everything. Home decor, kids' activities, recipes, linky parties, you name it, I probably posted it at some point.
But after looking at my analytics, I realized that my home decor posts were actually gaining me the most traction, and I was earning traffic both in search and in social media. And so I thought, and I, oh, and it's also the thing I like to write about the most. So I was like, cool, I'm gonna do a home decor blog. But as you know, there are a sea of home decor blogs, right? I mean, there are a million and seven, probably more than that. So how was mine gonna be different? Well, I knew I didn't wanna just share beautiful photos of interiors um, and tell people where they could buy the stuff. To me, that wasn't helpful as a reader. And actually what I liked talking about more and writing about more and sharing was the process I went through to get the look and feel that I wanted in my home. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go with what I'm good at. I'm gonna take my natural eye for decor and my ability to have a vision for a space and bring it to life and marry it with what made me a great teacher, which was breaking down concepts for people and explaining things to people in a really simple way. Okay, now, so my way of doing that would be, I take a finished project or a space and I work backward and I create almost recipe-like steps that anyone could follow to get the same results. And when I meshed these two strengths together, I found that the focus for my blog, my home decor blog, would be way less about inspiration and way more about teaching women how to decorate their home. Okay, and with this in mind, I created a brand promise because I sort of needed to hold myself accountable to this narrow, more narrow focus than I'd been, you know, just spouting off everything in my head. So I created a brand promise It looked like this. Still looks like this. Sort of a mission statement, if you will. And this brand promise became the standard for pretty much everything I published from that point forward. And it was always focused on teaching women to decorate their home. Focusing my content by figuring out first what I was already good at and making sure I was thinking about what would make me different from the giant pack that is the home decor um, allowed me to attract the right people and I've been able to take the content that's sitting there for free on my site and use it as a springboard to create paid courses that further help women who don't think they have an eye for design learn how to decorate their home with confidence. Okay, so now I knew exactly what I was building my website around and that was a little bit of a problem because now I had like more ideas. Um, but those 30 hour work weeks weren't gonna fly and I knew I needed to focus my time. Now the problem was that I knew I wasn't using my time wisely. I was just doing all the things that other bloggers were doing, all the things that marketers said they were doing, but I was doing them completely blindly. I had no, I had no way of even knowing if it was moving me towards the business I had, I had planned up in my head. And I was giving in to every distraction. So I thought I'd take a cue from my good old college days back at UC Santa Barbara where there are a lot of distractions. But I was able to manage my responsibilities and my fun really, really well. Now back then, my Sunday through Thursday looked a lot like this. The library, studying, student teaching, thesis, all the things. But on the weekend, my life looked like this. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Edward Forty hands. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> I like to call this being responsibly irresponsible. Okay, and I manage it because I was setting aside specific time without any distractions to get all my responsibilities taken care of with the goal that on the weekend, I get to have carefree fun, okay? And I knew this would work in my business, so I sat down and I created really specific work hours. I decided I'm gonna put myself inside a time container first. Okay, so these time slots have changed over the years for sure. Um, but I pretty much limit myself to the times my kids are at school or sleeping with one afternoon a week that my mom helps me with my kids. She actually was doing that before blog ever started. She wants to do it. Cool. You do it, mom. And I also sat down and brain dumped an entire list of tasks that I was doing, big, small, good, bad, anything I was doing to grow my blog. Okay. <clears throat> And over the next several weeks, I started tracking my time. So anytime I was doing anything related to my blog, I would write down exactly what I was doing and how much time it took. And at the same time, I started really paying attention to my analytics. 
And with that information, I set myself on a super strict work schedule that not only pr prioritized my time based, or sorry, my, my tasks based on my time or return on my time investment, because you guys just saw my income, like I only had time to invest. But it also, I also started batching my work. So instead of sitting down in the morning going like, I'll do a little email, a little social media, a little content, I realized I was switching gears way too often, which we all know is a complete waste of time. So I now sit down and on Mondays I know I'm doing email and social media. And on Tuesdays I have a full day, because my mom has the kids, so that's my course creation day. And then I do you know, content on another day. But as we all know, sometimes, and we all have a tendency to do this, we totally underestimate how much time it's going to take us to do something, especially when you're first learning it or you're doing it for the first time. You don't even have a system yet. So early on, and that, that brings out stress ball Corey again, which my husband doesn't like that person, okay? So I started scheduling in um, about two hours a week of catch-up time. And this allowed me to be okay with like when my kid got sick or you know, I just something took me way longer than I anticipated. It also allowed me to work ahead when I knew something was coming up, but I knew it was there, so I didn't stress out as much. Sorry. Now, having set work hours forced me to be really efficient with my time. I can't even believe what I can get done in a three-hour period. It's insanity. It also made it so I was less anxious about my business and way more fun again, which is really important. And as a result of implementing just these first two strategies, focusing my content and setting work hours, I was able to increase my income in the second half of 2014 by over 900%. Now, I know, this is still not a lot of money. I get it. I'm not like, woohoo, like Vegas. No, none of that. There was still one really big problem. I was setting these giant lofty goals based on like other success stories I would hear. And then when I wouldn't get there, I'd feel like crap. And I'm like, ah, oh, just go back to teaching, wah, right? Have you done that? Yeah. You might have set goals that look something like this. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do this for? I don't know. These are completely arbitrary numbers. And if you're a bit smarter, you might set a more specific goal and break it down into quarterly benchmark goals, right? This wasn't working for me either. I decided I was going to take my, month, my quarterly goals, break them down even further into monthly goals, because this allowed me to see right away what was working and what wasn't. Remember, time is an issue for me. I have a very limited amount. Okay, because like honestly, if you wait till the end of the quarter to see if what you're doing in the system you're creating is working or not, you could just wasted a ton of time, right? Facebook is a good example of this for me. Um, a while ago, everyone in Blogland, home decor Blogland, it's a place. Um, was talking about, you need to be posting to Facebook every hour. What? I tried it. Waste of time. I wasn't getting any return on that. So I stopped, and I got a lot of time back. Okay, so breaking down your, rule, your goals into smaller goals is one thing. But if you have goals and you have no idea of how you're going to get there, don't set the goal. Okay, so here's an example right from Asana in my business. If I know I want to increase my page views, I set specific goals for all of my major sources of traffic, specific goals, like actual numbers. Okay, and then I take each one of those and I break it down even further and I list out every single task I'm going to do to help me get there. And that looks like this. So if I want to increase my Pinterest traffic, I brainstorm all the ways I think I'm going to get there and I assign it to either myself or my Assistant Carol, I'm not a big fancy place. It's just me and my 10 hour a week assistant. Okay, and I give it a due date. So that every morning when I sit down to work, I open my Asana app, I go to my tasks, I know exactly what I'm doing during my work time. Okay, and tip. As soon as I find that I'm doing something really repetitively, I sit down, I screencast the entire thing, talking it through out loud in major detail, okay? And I dump it into a Google Drive, the video into a Google Drive with any documents, spreadsheets that go with it, hand it off to Carol. She's amazing. And then it, now she has that as her job. OK, and when she starts getting repetitive, maybe we'll hire someone else. Who knows? 
setting goals, breaking down your goals, and then having a task for every single one of them so you know exactly how you're going to get there will make sure that you're setting really realistic expectations for yourself and for your business. It'll also make sure that you're using your time really wisely because you're going to know what's working and what's not right away. And it will make you be really consistent instead of jumping from one goal to another. You can only work on so many goals at a time, if you're, especially when you're kind of a one man or woman show. So it'll force you to be really consistent. Now, up until recently, I used to refer to my business as a happy accident, which doesn't give me any credit for like, all the work I'm doing. Um, and although this thing that started as something I was doing for fun while my kids were napping is a definite pleasant surprise, the intentional way I run my business and use my time is absolutely no accident at all. I promise you it is not just sitting away at my computer typing in my pajamas eating bonbons. Although the pajamas part sometimes is true. I usually get dressed from the waist up because I might be on video. Okay? But the world that opens up to people like us when we discover the world of online business can and will take over your life if you let it. Don't let your business run you. Run your business. Now, this isn't something I say out loud very often. In fact, most of the women I stand next to in line to pick up my kids at school don't even know this about me. But I'm a blogger, and I get more out of it personally and professionally than I ever imagined. And the fact that I get to be the mom I've always wanted to be and run my own business, to me, is having it all. Now, I'm not the person here who makes the most money, but that goal I set for myself to replace my full-time income by 2019 happened back in 2016 because I implemented, thank you, because I implemented these strategies and I'm on track for some really good things to happen this year without relying at all on sponsored content, still making, t um, and still sticking to my 20 hour work week, which I don't know, it leaves lots of time for happy hour. <laughs> Thank you guys so very much.